Usually once every generation, something happens that shifts the landscape of American culture. This is Clear Lake, Iowa, and this is where this happened in 1959. We lost three of our most influential musicians on the planet, and we're going to retrace the final steps of that night. This is the surf ballroom here in Clear Lake, Iowa. Now, this is a place that I've wanted to come for a really long time, and there's certain legends that you hear about when you're growing up, and it almost doesn't even seem real until you step foot in the places where it happened. This is one of those places. Now, outside they have this memorial here for Richie Valens, Buddy Holly, and J.P. Richardson, known as the Big Bopper. In memory of rock and roll, and it's also got a memory for the pilot, Roger Peterson, who we'll talk about later. The above legends played their last concert at the Surf Ballroom, Clear Lake, Iowa, on February 2nd, 1959. Their earthly life tragically ended in a plane crash 5.2 miles northwest of Mason City Airport, February 3rd, 1959. Their music lives on. Now we're going to go in here in just a bit, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown of how things went down. There's just so much history here. At, I kind of can't believe that I'm here. I mean, this place literally has not changed at all since that night in 1959. Maybe a couple renovations, but you'll see once we step inside. Now, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper were on a tour called the Winter Dance Party Tour, and it was zigzagging all over through the Midwest. It was just a horrible and frozen experience for these guys. They were on a tour bus, and it didn't have heat, so these guys were freezing cold. The drummer for the tour actually got frostbite and was not able to finish some of these shows, and in a few of them, Buddy Holly was playing drums for some of the groups, and Richie Valens was playing uh, drums for Buddy Holly, I believe it was. But let's go in and check this out. Now, this is just the entryway, but it, I mean, it's got, a, it's got a pretty neat theme to it. But you can come here and check this place out. They still do have concerts on a regular basis, but this place has been... Most of it is still original, and the stuff that isn't original has been uh, restored to the exact specifications that things were. I mean, everything down to the wallpaper and everything else. Buddy Holly lives. Here's some of the original coat check rooms. And they'll still check your coat for a dollar. There's just such a historic feel in this building. It's almost impossible to explain, but it's like I said, there's certain legends that you hear about as you grow up, and this is definitely one of them. And it always seems like this is so far away, um, just in terms of the things that you can actually see and experience. But you can actually, I mean, this place still smells old, and... They have, they fully embraced this accident and they have all kinds of different things hanging up here. Like this is original signatures of the Big Bopper, Buddy Holly. That is absolutely awesome. And Richie Valens. Hopefully you can see that okay. Now they have all kinds of pictures and everything else here. This is a piano that was used on stage for many years. Um, it was. It says that it was signed by Duke Ellington. This baby grand piano has long been a part of the surf's history. Used for many years on stage and played by countless musicians, it became a canvas one evening when Duke Ellington signed the inside of it. Now, I don't see where the actual signature is. I don't know if it's faded or if I'm just looking in the wrong spot. If you know and if you've been here, leave a comment and let me know because um, I'd kind of like to see this. But this is the entryway into the surf ballroom. 
There are few buildings in existence today that represent a complete shift in our musical history, as the last concert venue for Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and J.P., the Big Bopper Richardson, the surf is the bedrock of where the sound and attitude of rock and roll changed forever. It's a plaque from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And here's some pictures that were taken that night. So these were some of the last pictures taken of Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper. Now also in these pictures... Um, Buddy Holly did not take the crickets on tour. They did not want to come out on this tour. So he came up with a new band for this tour, and he had Tommy Alsup for guitar and Waylon Jennings on bass. Now I was told that they redid this wall here, and this these pineapples were here back in the day, although these are not the originals, but they were redone from the same stencil of that. Now this is something else that I wanted to show you guys. This is the final the telephone that Buddy Holly and Richie Valens made their phone calls in uh, right before they left on the faded flight. Now Buddy Holly called his wife and he was afraid to tell her that he had chartered a plane and she had had premonitions or bad dreams lately that something bad would happen to him on this tour so he did not tell her that they were chartering a plane and this is where he talked to her for the final time and Richie Valens was he was coming down with the flu and he called his manager Bob Keane and was basically saying you know, I don't know about this tour, and his manager was trying to talk him into leaving the tour, which Richie would not do. Now this is the inside of the ballroom here. This is the dance floor right in front of me, and it, it's, it's cool because right now there's pretty much nobody here except a couple of workers, but you can come here, but there are just these fantastic pieces of art up here. And these, um, these tables and booths are original to the time period. So this is exactly how this ballroom would have looked on that day. And this place is like a time capsule. But it's kind of cold in here. It's a little bit, I mean, you can, you can almost hear the music playing. Now, a lot of other acts play here. Um, they still do have concerts pretty much every week or every other week. REO Speedwagon is going to be here in just a couple of days, and they're starting to kind of get ready for that show. But everybody who's somebody has been playing here. This place has been around since 1948. And this right up here is the final stage where Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper played. Now, these are just fantastic. There's Richie Valens, Buddy Holly, and the Big Bopper, all with their catchphrases. Now, they say that this is the day the music died. These, at the time, these guys were three of the most well known musicians in the country. And this is the infamous stage right up here. Now the front of it, I'll show you guys in just a little bit, but the front is added on, but the original stage in the back is where they played from that night. Now Buddy Holly really did not want to go on this winter dance party tour. And it was cold, it was a Midwest tour in the middle of winter. Their bus was, it broke down every couple of days, it had no heat. Um, these guys were just absolutely miserable. So Buddy Holly decided to charter a plane so that they could get to their gig in Minnesota just a little bit earlier so they could do some laundry and get a little rest. Now Buddy had two other seats on this plane available, and like I said, Richie Valens was sick that night. The Big Bopper was also coming down with a bad case of the flu. Neither one of them were feeling very good, and the original people that were supposed to be on this plane was going to be Buddy Holly, Tommy Alsup, and Waylon Jennings. Now, Waylon Jennings gave up his seat to the Big Bopper just, just to be nice. 
And Tommy Alsop and Richie Valens ended up doing a coin toss here to determine who was going to get that third plane, that third seat on the plane. Now this is just phenomenal. This is the exact spot that Buddy Holly would have been standing on that night. And this is the view that he would have had with about 1,500 people out there on the dance floor. Now just imagine that. This is one of the last views that all three of these guys ever had. Now that right back here, this is the green room. And I'm going to take you back there in just a second. Now, this is the original stage right here, the, uh, the non-shiny part towards the back. That's the original stage. And everything, everything in front of that is an add-on. But this right back here is where Buddy Holly and Richie Valens, the Big Bopper, Waylon Jennings, everybody that performed that night, Dion and the Belmonts performed, they all stood back here, and this was the part of the stage where they performed. Now you can just feel the history in here. This is just, I can't say that, I can't stress this enough. This is just awesome to be here. And if any of you guys get a chance to come here, please do. Um, this place is just a phenomenal place to visit. Now back to the Richie Valens coin toss. That actually happened right here in this doorway. I mean, this is where history happened, and this is where Richie Valens sealed his fate. He won the coin toss, and he won the seat on that plane, and that happened right here in this doorway. And, it, I mean, it's amazing that you can be here. This, this place has not changed, and this is exactly what things would have looked like when he was here. And inside this green room here, a lot of artists have signed the walls. Like this right here, we have ZZ Top. Um, it's Dusty Hill, Frank Beard, Billy Gibbons, and, you know, self-portrait. This is Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys, who's performed here a couple of times. And this is another signature from Brian Wilson. But if you, you could spend all day just looking at signatures on here. But one of the other stories here is that Buddy Holly, once he first got here, he needed to do laundry and he couldn't find a place to do it. So he ended up washing his shirts and his clothes right here in this sink. And I was told that it was the sink on the left-hand side right here. And the sink does not work. They don't want artists to pour anything out in here or to use it in any way. But this is the original sink that Buddy Holly used to do his laundry on that night. And then he hung it up just right up here on these hooks. And it's pretty cool to think about. Now, the other part, this right here is the door that they would have left out of that night to get picked up to go to the airport. And we're going to go to the airport next. I'm going to show you the crash site. But Now, it's amazing to think of the artists that have been in this room, but this right here is... Well, this right here is Waylon Jennings' signature, and there's a bigger story here that I'll go into in just a bit. But um, this is Willie Nelson's signature right here, and right underneath that is Shooter Jennings, all of whom have performed right here. So many people, so much history here. And you can feel it in here. But this is the final room. This is where Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, the Big Bopper, and all them were hanging out. And this is the green room, the dressing room. And this right here is the entrance that they would have went to get on stage for the final time. And this is just, I mean, it, it almost gives you chills walking in this exact spot. But like I said, the shiny part is the added on stage. The duller part is the original stage. But this right here is the exact view that they would have had that night and then when they unplugged they would have came right back out and back into the green room now waylon jennings and buddy holly were really close friends and waylon jennings had given up his seat to the big bopper because he was getting sick once word got through to buddy holly that waylon jennings wasn't going to be on that flight he came down these stairs Buddy sat here, 
not in these exact chairs because these are not originals, but he was sitting right here as Waylon came down the stairs and he said to Waylon Jennings, you're afraid to fly in the plane with us, aren't you? I hope your bus freezes. Then Waylon Jennings looked at him and said, well, I hope your plane crashes. And Waylon Jennings lived with this every day for the rest of his life. Now, Don McLean plays here every year. Well, not maybe not every year, but he plays here. They have a remake of the Winter Dance Party, and he comes and performs. Obviously, he did American Pie, which was about the day the music died. One more look at this sink. I just can't believe that this is still here. I mean, this is history. Just very cool to see this. They've got to be running out of room for stars to sign. As you can see, they're starting to sign on the roof or on the ceiling. Now, they do have one request here that if you are not an artist, that you don't sign the walls. And it looks like people have been pretty good at respecting that, which is good to see. They even have a note here to remind you. This is just so cool. This is where these guys spent the final hours of their life. Just look at these steps for a second and just just take this all in. The final performance that Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper ever performed, they headed right up these stairs. I mean, when they talk about the day music died, this is literally where all this happened. Now, I'll tell you more about the circumstances of the crash in a little bit, because like I said, we are going to go to the crash site, and we're going to retrace the final moments of these guys' lives. I'm going to take you to the airport and show you where they took off from, but this is just one more look at the green room, the infamous door. Now, the surf ballroom fully embraces what happened. They embrace the history they celebrate the history, not so much that this is the last place these guys performed, but just celebrating the life that they lived, the music they created, and the music that's still being played here today. All these pictures here are of people that have performed here since that happened. I mean, we have B.B. King, we have, I mean, pretty much everybody you can think of, ZZ Top. This is one of B.B. Uh, King's guitars. This is just very cool. I mean, this is, I've been to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, and this is every bit as cool, if not better, because it's not just stuff. This is history. Brett Michaels has performed here. Now, I've seen a couple mentions of Chuck Berry, so I'm assuming that he probably played here a time or two. This is ZZ Top, who's played here a few times. Their signed photo and guitar and it's sad to see some of the what's happening with some of these guys like ZZ Top you know we just lost Dusty Hill not that long ago and most of the people that we grew up listening to or that at least I grew up listening to are starting to retire or pass away and then a lot of these groups kind of pass the torch and like um, one good example Leonard Skinner Foreigner Bands like that that are only touring with one original member, it's kind of sad to see. There's Charlie Daniels Fiddle who's played here. I mean, way, way too much stuff to show you all in one video. But like I said, Willie Nelson's performed here. Pretty much everybody that you can think of. And they have, this is Gene Simmons' bass. He played here with his solo band. But They have signed guitars, signed photos of everybody who's played here. REO Speedwagons played here. Cheap Tricks played here.
Absolutely awesome. And it's so quiet in here. That's the Cheap Trick guitar with a signed photo. These guys are from Rockford, Illinois. That's actually where I was born, so I kind of have a special place in my heart for Cheap Trick. Buddy Guy. Martina McBride was here not too long ago. That's her guitar, or her signature on a guitar. It's just so much stuff to show you guys here. There's Kevin Costner in Modern West. He signed on the top of that guitar. Now this is one of the coolest things I think they have here. The day the music died, this old guitar was signed by Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper, I believe the night that they performed here. The signatures are kind of faded and it's hard to see them. I, you can barely see them, or at least I can barely see them. Hopefully it shows up a little better on camera. But just the fact that that's probably the last thing that these guys signed. Here's a few other things from people that have performed here. Pat Boone's shoes. There's just so much to see here. Now this is a picture of the plane crash. And I'll probably show you this again um, later on in the video. But this was the guy who took the only pictures of the plane crash. And they have his camera on display here that he used to take those famous photos. It's just kind of cool looking at this and thinking that that was actually there that day. Now this is one of the headsets that came off that faded flight. I'm not sure what the story was of how they got this back, but this was actually part of the wreckage and it's in surprisingly good shape for what it went through but this is uh, you know you all this is one of those kind of things that you really just can't believe that you're seeing and this is the winter dance party tour see how they zigzagged all over the place whoever booked this tour probably should have been fired because so many of these towns could have been you know a you know, like a 50-mile drive instead of driving 400 miles and then driving back to where you came from. And this is some of the Big Bopper stuff. And these are some handwritten lyrics that came out of this, that came out of his suitcase here. It's almost kind of eerie seeing some of this stuff, but it's just, I mean, history is still alive. These guys are still, I mean, their music is still with us. Their spirit is still here at the surf ballroom. They have so much, th so many things to see here. This is the Big Bopper's necktie. And Buddy Holly's cufflinks. You know, this has pretty much become a museum too. The day the music died, and the and Buddy Holly and Richie Valens and the Big Bopper. This is really cool. Now, if there's any of this stuff that you guys want to read, feel free to pause it. I didn't. I want to try to not make this video excessively long, so I'm trying to go through some of this stuff a little bit quicker. But there should still be some good shots to where you'd be able to read it if you wanted to. And this, I believe, was Richie Valens' billfold. 
and a bow tie. There's some lyrics. Now this is the original ticket box that would have been here that night. It's just so cool to see all this stuff. Now when I showed you that door in the green room that would have been the door that they would have most likely left out of, this is the door right here. So when these guys went to get the their ride to the airport, this is the door they should have come out of. So they would have had a waiting wagon right outside here. And I, from every report, it sounded like they were picked up in a station wagon, which is kind of weird to think that these guys really didn't have any um, exceptional modes of transportation. But this right here would have been where they left the surf ballroom. Here's one more look at the outside of the surf ballroom before we head over to the airport. They have this dedicated on the Register of Historic Places from 2011. Now we'll head over to the airport and I'll tell you guys a little bit about what happened next. Now this is Mason City Municipal Airport and this is where Buddy Holly, Richie Valens and the Big Bopper came to board their fated flight. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this flight and I'm going to show you the airport where they would have been dropped off and the runway where they took off. Now this building up here on my left is the terminal where they would have been dropped off out front. Now as I mentioned earlier, Buddy Holly, they, their mode of transportation on that bus was less than acceptable. So Buddy was really excited about booking a flight and getting to their next destination a little bit sooner so they could do some laundry and get a little bit of rest. Now the promoter at the surf ballroom booked this flight for buddy and they had it was buddy and there was two other seats and they were booking this at 36 dollars per seat this is the runway right out here where they would have taken off now the guys were dropped off here about 1 a.m or a little bit before but the pilot's name was Roger Peterson. He was 21 years old. He was a uh, flight instructor here, and he was given the task of taking Buddy Holly, Richie, and the Big Bopper to their next destination, which was in Minnesota. Um, they had a gig that wasn't too far from Fargo, North Dakota. It was about 400 miles from here, and it was supposed to be an easy two-hour flight. Now, Roger Peterson, there's a a little bit of a debate on this. He did not have an instrument rating as a pilot. He did have his pilot's license, but he did not um, fully know how to use the instruments, which would have been necessary for flying in the blizzard that was currently happening when these guys took off. So right up here is where these guys would have been dropped off to get onto their flight. They would have went through the terminal and uh you know gone to the other side to get their plane it was a a beachcraft bonanza and it was a four-seater and the guys all loaded in and took off about 1 a.m now the weather conditions were not good that night uh but it didn't seem to scare any of these guys from getting on this flight roger peterson uh the owner of this airport at the time his boss said that he had full faith in him, that he knew what he was doing. But it is said that he did not receive enough information about the weather to properly make that flight. But this is the final place that these guys would have touched ground. Now let's go over to the crash site. 
Now this is where the crash site is. It's probably a half mile off the road. There is a parking lot here that you can park. It's just straight ahead here. Now this is a farmer's field and he has fully embraced this location and does graciously allow people to come and visit. Now they put up this statue here of the Buddy Holly glasses and that marks the path that you walk back towards to get to the crash site. Now it's very quiet out here ex with the exception of a little bit of uh, wind, but this is just, I mean, it feels so surreal to even be here and to know what happened out here back in 1959. Now after the plane took off, it would only be in the air for about five minutes. And it was, I believe, 5.2 miles out from the airport that the plane went down. And it was just a gruesome sight. Buddy Holly and Richie Vallon's bodies were close to the plane crash wreckage. The Big Bopper's body was found about 40 feet behind the plane crash. And Roger Peterson's body, oddly enough, was discovered inside the plane wreckage. And his, his was the only one that was still inside the wreckage. It's just so quiet out here. And you almost get that, that it's almost hard to explain it. It's, there's a certain vibe out here. It's not eerie, it's not scary, but it's almost like a very quiet piece but the plane the plane wreckage was up against a fence and I'll show you guys the picture once we get up here a little bit closer but this was I mean when they talk about the day the music died it literally happened right in the middle of this farmer's field and it would be kind of weird owning the property where something like this happened but like I said these people are fantastic about allowing people to come and visit. And that's just a really nice thing because he doesn't have to. And it's, you know, he constructed this memorial up here um, as a, a place where people can come and pay their respects. But it's just so peaceful out here. And you kind of have to wonder, at any point, did did Buddy or Richie or the Big Bopper or even the pilot Roger Peterson know that this was that they were going to go down here you know or if it just suddenly happened i mean nobody will ever probably know but this is the the crash site the plane wreckage was up against this fence right behind here and people leave a lot of things here i mean guitar picks glasses postcards um there's somebody's work id here just People leave a lot of different things here, but this is the crash site, and this is where the wreckage was found. This is where the bodies were found, tragically. It's also important to note that these guys were all at the top of their game at this time. Richie Valens was only 17 years old, Buddy Holly was only 22 years old, and the Big Bopper was the oldest of all of them, but still pretty young. Now, to put this into perspective a little bit, this is one of the original photos of the plane crash from pretty much the same vantage point. As you can see, there's, I mean, the wreckage is up against the fence here, and this is exactly where the memorial is. But just a tragic, tragic day in music here. It's kind of hard to think that this is the same exact location, but it is. There really just isn't anything to, there really are no words for this. Here's one more look at the memorial. Now I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully learned something from it and enjoyed seeing these locations. But I just want to say thank you guys for watching this. This was kind of a harder one to make, but I really did enjoy doing this. And uh, if you guys get a chance to visit, please do. But thank you guys so much for watching and have a good day.